fission probability. So you understand this. I think uh, we have discussed it a number of times. We cannot really predict or say that, OK, after fission happens, let's say for uranium, I will be getting barium or krypton. Well, that's not fixed. Okay, It's more or less probabilistic in nature. Probability of getting a barium and a krypton is more. That's why we get barium. So it's not that they, there are uh, not other possibilities. There are other possibilities which are also going to look into now. Okay, so that is the main aim of today's class. Uh, the question is why fission probability is low when low energy ne neutron reacts with uranium 238. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that uh, if you look into any practical nuclear reactors, uranium 235 is mostly used as the fuel. Okay. But then uranium 239, uh, 38 is not used as the fuel. Okay, so if we consider that, we do understand that uh, uranium 235 is like more popular as a nuclear fuel rather than uranium 238. The, qu the question is why? Okay, and that is what we are going to find an answer to today. Okay, now this is also again very descriptive, but then we are not going into all detail. I think it will be really difficult for us to cover the syllabus if we go that fast. So let's just look into the reaction now. Okay. So if we just concentrate on this reaction here, uh, what we have is we have a neutron and it basically strikes a uranium-235 and then we have got uranium-236, okay, which is in the excited state. Okay, So uh, we do have uh, an element and we have got one more element and some neutron. Okay, So nu is usually nothing but the number of neutrons that we are talking about. So if you remember a typical nuclear reaction, this new value might be three. There will be three neutrons, okay? but it's not mandatory. There are reactions where you might get two neutron or just a single neutron which is coming out of the reaction. Okay? Now, an important point to note here is that when uranium-235 is hit by neutron, this uranium-236 will be in the excited state so that it becomes fissionable. So in the last class, that's yesterday, we have seen that uh, what exactly do I mean by a fissionable uh, element? Okay, So we do have something which we call as the activation energy. And uh, if a nucleus uh, wants to fission into two parts, as per the Bohr-Wheeler theory, okay, or if we consider the liquid drop model, it should overcome that potential barrier to fission into two parts. So that means after I excite uranium-235, with neutron, it should be excited above its activation energy. That means it should be sufficiently, the energy should be sufficiently high so that it can overcome the activation energy and then it will break into two. Okay. So let's just have a look here. Uh, what happens is that in general, if we find out the Q value for this reaction, so I'm just concentrating on this particular reaction. Okay. So if I concentrate on this reaction, the Q value is nothing but N plus 2 u okay so this mass plus this mass into c square minus the product that we get uranium 236 right that's good so if you just do the calculation we have done these calculations before so you will get the answer to be approximately 6.6 .6 mev that means the uranium 236 that we are talking about has got this much of energy okay now now if the potential barrier is lower than this okay or the activation energy is lower than this. So it was observed experimentally that uh, the activation energy for uranium-236 is actually 6.2 MeV. Okay, so I'm just taking a typical value. See, uh, this activation energy can also be done. Cal the calculation can be done for this. Okay, now there are different models for finding out the activation energy. Depending on that model, we can have different values. So in some book, if you find the activation energy to be somewhere, let's say 5.8. That might not be wrong as well because they might have considered a different model on People are still doing research in this field also. So see, the activation energy is 6.2 MeV. That M236 wants to break into two different nuclei. It should have an energy greater than 6.2 MeV. That is the meaning of activation energy here. Okay, But if we see the Q value is 6.6 .6 MeV. So that means it's already greater than 6.2 MeV. That means this uranium-236 does not have to undergo okay, uh, or does not have to overcome any kind of potential barrier to break into two. Okay? And that is why it is readily fissionable. So uh, the term is readily fissionable okay, and another term might be fissile material. Okay? It's a fissile material. 
so what we say is that uranium 236 is basically at a higher energy okay state obviously compared to the activation energy so some of you are interested in uh, knowing how to write it down then you can probably write this sentence okay so i'll explain i obviously i'm going to explain it longer but then for writing purpose i think this sentence should uh, help okay so you see that the uh, uranium 236 will always be at a higher energy compared to the activation energy of 6.2 mm so you can remember this to be around 6 so even if you write down 5.9 or 6 in your exam it will be acceptable not a problem okay there is it's not like it's a very strict boundary and i hope you understand that when i say million electron volt i'm talking about 10 to the power 9 so even if this is 5.6 or 5.8 and this is 6.2 the order does not change so more or less the result is acceptable okay so what happens here is that it is easily fissile uh, fissionable so that means simple words we can say that there is no uh, barrier as such okay and it can readily fissile okay so it can readily uh, undergo a fission reaction and as a result of which we will get actually two nuclei okay so uh, the final sentence might be hence it has no barrier for fission and can readily fission okay so we call it as a readily fissionable material okay or uranium 236 is a fissile material okay now what happens to other radioactive elements like plutonium thorium okay or other isotopes of uranium and so on okay so if you consider something like uh, plutonium 239 or uranium 233 they are also fissile material okay so that means that if i uh, allow some kind of uh, particle let's say a neutron to be incident on it they will also have an ex uh, excitation uh, energy which will be greater than the activation energy or the q value will be greater than the activation energy so if that happens we can easily say that they will break into two so that is very important now uh, we have also seen in the last few classes that uh, we have read about the topic of uh, resonance okay neutron resonance or fission re resonance reaction okay so what kind of uh, energy the incoming neutron should have so that it actually uh, propagates a fission reaction okay so that is also important so it's not that uh, any neutron uh, this is an important note okay if any neutron will always actually induce fission it's not uh, mandatory okay what happens is sometimes this neutron can get captured also okay and then uh, i don't really get the uranium breaking up into two different nuclei so what is important is with what energy the neutron is incident so if you remember that uh, if i have this and this is the energy gap the neutron that we have should have an energy comparable to this energy gap okay and then only i can expect that uranium 235 will be excited to uranium 236 okay and we'll have enough energy to break into two so this is again very important okay so this is an important note might be an objective question okay so can all neutron induce a fission reaction okay that's important okay so uh, then what happens to uranium 238 now why it does not fish, uh, it's not readily fissionable okay so that is what we are going to do, look into now so let's say um it's still on now Okay. So, I thought like the other day. Okay. 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 Um. Okay. So uranium. Uh. We have got uranium to thirty eight, and then we have got neutron, and now when uranium to thirty eight is bombarded by neutron, we have got uranium to thirty nine. So now this uranium to thirty nine is again in the excited state. Okay, and uh, what we can do is we. Actually, again, find out the Q value. So, if we do the calculation for Q value using the formula, we find out the result to be 4.8 mm. Please remember, for your exam, I might ask you to find out the Q value for uh, uh, reaction when neutron actually hits a uranium 238. Okay, so you have to do it separately. But for this explanation, where I say that uranium 235 is a fissile or or is more appropriate for a fission reaction or a nuclear reactor compared to uranium 239. You have to give a reason. Probably this is the lecture that you need to refer to. Okay, and you really don't need to do the calculation. You can just remember this and write it down. Simple. Okay? So what happens is, if the neutron gets absorbed, this much energy is available. Okay, that is the meaning of Q value. But anyway, in general, if you want to say that the Q is 4.8 mg. Now, 
what is the activation energy for uranium 239 okay so if you look into the activation energy of uranium 239 we will see this is higher okay and in fact according to the model according to the model as we can consider the upper end upper range is 6.2 mv so we did found it to be 4.0 mv which is the q value and the uh, uh, energy that is uh, needed to overcome the potential barrier is 6.0 mv so that means uranium 239 does not have sufficient energy to overcome this potential barrier okay and uh, hence uh, we can say that the fission probability is negligible okay with low energy neutron now you might ask me why do i use the term low energy neutron because you see uh, we have a reaction where we are having a neutron incident on uranium 238 if we can adjust the energy of the neutron which we can do okay because this is the incoming particle we can adjust the energy based on that uh, energy uh, it will actually give uh, uh, or it can actually uh, engineer the energy that is available for uranium 239 So, if it's basically a low energy neutron, it does not give enough energy to uranium 238 to become uranium 239, so that it overcomes the potential barrier. So, we are considering a low energy neutron. Okay, so that is very important. But then, if we are considering a high energy neutron, fission can take place even in uranium 239. So, do nuclear reactors uranium 238 used uranium 238 for fission process? The answer is yes. But then. you need a higher energy neutron and now you understand that uh, if you are having a particle okay and uh, if you are uh, trying to give more energy to it the setup that you need will be more complicated right so you know whenever the whenever these experiments are carried out in this cern okay uh, where we are talking about the high energy collision of proton and all it's a huge setup okay at, at this moment this is the most uh, expensive experiment that is present on earth okay in any field forget about physics in any field this is the most expensive experiment that is going on in the world okay so we are trying to understand the origin of universe there in one word okay there are a lot of other things which are being studied but we are also going to study the origin of universe this is also part of the syllabus we are going to look into it later but then uh, if you are having such setup you need a lot of uh, monetary support right the finance finance is very high so whenever we are talking about something like high energy neutron to have a setup we can actually accelerate the neutron to high speed so that's why uranium 235 is okay because i don't need a high energy neutron for that reaction okay so i can have a simpler system and also if you are having a high energy uh, neutron the controlling factor has to be greater okay there has to be more security their chance risks are more involved okay so it's always preferable that uranium 235 is used for nuclear fission okay so if uranium is used in any nuclear reactor most of the times it's uranium 235 but then there is a question that the abundance of uranium 235 is less compared to uranium 239 but then there is a way out which we are going to discuss okay mm -hmm.